Hey there, welcome back to Mantic String Works. So today on the workbench we have this Gibson gig bag. And inside we have this really pretty Gibson Les Paul Tribute in a satin honey burst color. Really nice. And you might have noticed it's a left hand model. <laughs> so it's backwards for most of us. <laughs> Anyways, the owners brought it in because it's brand new. It was just bought a few weeks ago. He hasn't touched it in far, as far as setup goes. He wants me to look at it. And he's also got a pickup he wants to change as well. But I thought for this video it would be fun to check the setup of this guitar straight from the factory. So let's look at the string height, the neck relief, the nut action, bridge pickup bridge and neck pickup heights, anything on the guitar, right? So let's check it out and see how good these relatively inexpensive Les Pauls are. Stay tuned. Welcome to Manatic Stringworks. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more video content. All right, well, let's have a look at this brand new Gibson Les Paul tribute model. You know, very sweet guitar. So, standard Les Paul configuration. It's a step up from the studio, I imagine. So, what's a little different? Well, you don't have bindings from a Les Paul standard, right? I noticed the Gibson logo, I mean, that's just painted on there. It's not an inlay. So, you know, a few things to make it a little less expensive. But in general, and obviously no binding here on the fretboard. But in general, you know, it's the same as a regular Les Paul standard. It looks really good in this satin honey burst, like really sweet. So, maple body. You see the maple cap here. You know, nice graining on that. The neck is maple as well. Very nice. So I mentioned that the owner had purchased this guitar about two, three weeks ago. He hasn't done anything to the setup. Hasn't changed the string height or the neck relief or anything. So he wants me to have a look at it. See how it's set up. He's played it a little bit. He likes it. Of course, it's a left-hand guitar. So I'm curious. I thought it'd be fun in this video to, you know, check and see what the setup is like straight from the factory. So the guitar store that he bought it at didn't touch it either. They offered to do a setup. He said no. <laughs> so this should be straight from the factory. So we're going to check the nut height. We're going to check the neck relief. We're going to check the string height. Check the intonation, pickup height, check the tailpiece, the bridge, and of course we'll check the electronics too, make sure everything's working fine. So let's get at it. All right, so like any setup, I always like to start with the neck relief. So again, we're left-handed, so this is the base side up here. We've got a capo on the first, make sure the string, I'll tighten that up a little bit. Okay. So factory specs for a Gibson Les Paul generally between eight and ten thousandths of an inch at the toy at the seventh fret. That's about where I like these. So I'll try eight. So we're gonna push down here, you know, at the twenty-first fret, nineteenth is okay, somewhere around here. And we'll go to the seventh. I can hear it just scraping. I don't know if you can hear that. We'll try ten thousandths. Yeah, it's scraping. So this is pretty low. I would say it's a little less than eight. Might be a little low for what I like. 
There's a 4,000 sphaler gauge. <laughs> so as long as there's no buzz or rattle, it's fine. So, so far, so good. Take that off. So now we'll look at the string height. So at the 12th fret for a Gibson Les Paul, the spec is 5 64ths on the bass side, 3 64ths on the treble side. And just by eye, I can see that it definitely does come down like that. So I'm going to use a string gauge ruler right here. I'll flip it up sort of upside down because it's left handed. <laughs> And I will check. Yeah, we're right at five on the bass side. And the treble is riding four, which to me is fine. I, I don't mind that at all. I always find that 364 is very low. So again, Pretty close to factory spec, nothing wrong with that, very acceptable. So let's look at the nut action, so the height between the top of the fret and the underside of the string, so the first fret. So we can press down at the third and then just feel it and I can already tell that that's nice and low. The string is pretty much touching the first fret when I do that, so that tells me that it's nice and low. So spec-wise, we'd like to see this around 18 to 20 thousandths on a guitar. So I'm going to take an 18 feeler gauge and let's pass it under there. Yeah. So you know, a good way to check is you put it under. Yeah, and it's rattling, so that means it's less than 18. But I can get it under. So yeah, that's pretty low. Let's try the treble side. Again, the setup looks great. I mean, I'm going to say it's probably around 15 or 16 thousandths, which again, I find a little low <laughs> for a new guitar, but uh, it's set up pretty well. And really, if I strum an open string, you know, pretty hard, and there's no rattling, yeah, you know, that means we don't have an issue up here at all, so that looks good too. Just a note, this is a Graftec nut. It says so in the specs for this guitar, so that's a nice feature as well. And in case you were wondering, uh, this is a 12-inch radius fretboard. That's pretty standard on Les Pauls. And I checked up here at the first fret and down around the 19th frets, the same thing. So it's not a compound radius, but 12 inch. So the next thing I want to check is the intonation. And so I just tuned it up. And I noticed that you know, the bridge has a nice angle to it. Of course, it's left-handed, so <laughs> it goes the other way. But it has a nice angle to it as well. Gibson scale length, 24 and 3 quarters from the nut to the bridge here on the first string. So let's check, we're a little sharp still. Again, these are new strings. I'm not sure if they've been stretched or whatever. So, tuned up intonation wise. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Maybe a little sharp on the D. Sharp. Pretty good. I'm going to say the intonation is pretty darn good. New strings, you know, it hasn't been you know, touched or played a lot. Uh, the D and the G may be a little sharp, but other than that, I don't see any major issues here at all, so that's another check for Gibson. 
we might as well check the electronics here so I've got the volumes up tones up so this should just be the neck yeah. should be just the bridge. So that's all good. Everything works. There's no static, dirty pots, anything like that. That's good. So one thing you should always check with the tunematic style bridge, so with the tailpiece and the bridge here, is if the strings coming off the saddles touching the back of the bridge, which you don't want, so that's why you would adjust the tailpiece. So I'm looking here, the tailpiece is really low. It's like basically right down to the body. So there could be an issue, but let's, let's have a look. So here, just take a piece of paper, nice thin piece of paper, and we should be able to push that under. And I can't. So this first string, I can't get it under. So that means it's touching the back of the bridge. Second string, the same thing. Oh, third string is good. Fourth string, I oh, can't get that under. Fifth, neither. <laughs> and the sixth, okay. So pretty much four out of six strings, five almost, are touching the back of the bridge. So that's going to maybe cause some tuning issues, going to cause some weird buzzing sometimes. You just don't want that. You want the string to only have the one point here that it's contacting between the bridge and the nut and here, right? You don't want anything else getting in the way. So how do we fix that? Well, we raise the tailpiece up a little bit. Okay, so when you want to raise or lower the tailpiece, you don't just go in there with a screwdriver. Certainly a screwdriver with the blade is too thin. That's no good. Here I've got a big long one. That's a little thicker. But still it wants to move around a little bit, right? So a little trick is you take, you know, here we've got microfiber cloth. We're going to put that over. Now it takes up some of that slack and I'm just going to gently raise, so I'm going to turn it counterclockwise, the tailpiece up, maybe a quarter turn. Okay, and then you can check again with your paper. Yeah, it's still snagging under there. So we'll do that again. Again, you can look at the slot. You can judge about how much you're turning it. Again, do about a quarter turn. And you just keep doing that until your string is not touching the back of the bridge. So this one has to come up quite a bit. Normally you never have it sucked right down to the body. So let me do that a few more times. These up quite a bit and I think you can see the posts are sticking up now above the body. I'm still touching a little bit here on the first and sixth strings, but the other strings all pass underneath no problem. So when I do a full setup on the guitar, I'll raise these up without any string tension. Again, it's okay to come up because you're loosening the tension. When you go down, you're better to you know, relax the strings. But I'll raise the post up higher. You still want a decent break angle, but I'm just not happy with the fact that the first and sixth strings are still touching. Everything else is okay, though. Okay. Well, what else can we look at? Well, let's look at the pickup height. So I like to see an eighth of an inch on the the bass side, <laughs> left hand guitar, 330 seconds on the treble, so using my string gauges which are available for sale at www.manticstringworks.com. So I'm going to put the bass side, so you hold down the last fret and then pass that underneath. Now that's, there's no room at all, it really needs to come down and we'll do on the treble side, same thing. Yeah, so these are quite high. So I would lower those down. And again, I'm going to be doing a full setup and changing this bridge pickup. So I'm not going to fuss around with it too much right now. 
Okay, well one last thing I'll look at um, are the frets. So are they level? Is there any fret buzzing, unevenness? I mean that would really be a shame, right? I'm not sure if this model is plecked using the pleck machine at the factory or not, but you know, just looking at everything, it looks pretty good, but you know, fret rocker is not going to lie, right? So let's see here. Yeah, just a little bit of rock. Oh, that was me, maybe. Yeah. So I'm just going to go along, and you're riding three frets, and if one is high, it's going to rock in the middle, and then you adjust the length, you know, of all these different sides to make sure you're always riding three frets. Okay, so far so good. Didn't want to say anything out loud. So of course, as soon as I do that, <laughs> we're going to run into something. Again, make sure you're only riding on three frets. There we go. Okay, so we're up at the 12th. That's good. Well, so far, so good. Not hearing anything. No rocking. Alright, well, I think we can say that the frets are well done here. At least they're nice and level, right? And even, which makes adjustments so much easier. And then you can also get your action a little lower. If that's how you like to play. Because you're not going to get any fret buzz. Okay, so that's a pass <laughs> for that as well. And the quality of the fret work is pretty good. I don't really see any big scratches or gouges. The fret ends are okay. A little sharp maybe down here by the 15th fret up near the body, but you know, you can hear it a bit. But it's not catching, so you can definitely just sand these down smooth, file them a little bit, but nothing terrible. No, looks good. All right, so what do I think of this Les Paul Tribute guitar made, well, bought a few weeks ago, <laughs> brand new 2023 model. I think it's great. I mean, the price point here in Canada, I think, is about $1,750, brand new. You can find a few of them used here and there. So, you know, all the Les Paul features, you know, you do have a Graftech nut here. These are Al Nico 2 humbuckers. Standard controls, tunematic bridge, aluminum, nice maple cap, you know, mahogany body. Looks like a rosewood, but could be like that laurel stuff, but I think it's rosewood. Mahogany on the back, a different color, so they didn't color match it. So if that gets you, you know, maybe you don't like that. And that satin finish here continues on the headstock and it's just painted. So they save a little money, no binding, of course. But what I like aside from the aesthetics is the setup. So, you know, we had about 16 thousandths here at the first fret. So nut action, that's really good. Neck relief was around 8,000 at the seventh. That's really nice. Our string heights, we were at five and four, which to me is perfectly acceptable. Three is the Gibson spec, but I like that at four myself. And sometimes I'll just do four right across. Well, you can only adjust right the first and sixth strings on these bridges but sometimes I'll just do them all at four and the intonation was quite good very acceptable a couple of strings were a little sharp but you know that could just be new strings too pick up height too high and the only niggly thing I would say is that you know they had the tailpiece right down to the body so we had the strings touching at the back of the bridge so that, I'm not sure why it was like that. It should, you know, so I'll fix that when I do the setup. But other than that, really pretty guitar. I like the satin finish. The satin honey burst looks really good. So, if you see one of these in a local shop or online used, you should check it out. I think it's worth it.
All right. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video where we do a setup and pickup swap. Bye for now.